there, Stephen. Well, we're, we're outside McDonald's uh, in town. So there's a Greg's, a McDonald's, uh, and a big... Right, maybe I got my wires crossed there. Yeah, I thought we were heading towards the town hall. Right, so maybe need... Sorry, sorry about that. Right, so back up into town, um, up to, head up towards McDonald's and Lloyd's Bank. Lloyd's Bank is opposite McDonald's, that's where we're at. And yeah, and there's, there's a big statue, I'm looking at a big statue right in front of me, four men, like industry and things like that, you know. All right, you're not far away, are you? Okay, yeah, that, that's not far from us, I don't think. See you soon, brother. Bye. Good morning. Good morning, Baro. Welcome, Baro. Welcome to your encounter with this, the Bible, the inerrant, infallible Word of God. It's without error. The Bible has no contradiction. The Bible, it says, the flower fades, the grass withers, but God's Word remains forever. God the God of the Bible, the only God in existence. There is no other. I, I am the Lord, he says. Before me there was no God formed. And after me there's no God formed after me. The God of the Bible is the only God in existence. The only God who created anything. Apart from him, there wasn't anything made that was made, you see. The God of the Bible is a creator God. He said, let there be light. And there was light in the beginning. This universe didn't create itself. Your life isn't an accident. Your life has meaning and purpose. The God of the Bible made every one of us. The God of the Bible created the whole human race, no matter what color their skin, black, brown, white, or yellow, there's only one race on planet Earth, the human race, all created by the God of the Bible, the God that every human being knows exists. You see, my purpose in being here today isn't to try and dissuade you from your atheism. If you have professed atheism, you claim to be an atheist, I need to remind you what the Bible says. The Bible says that you know God exists. Every human being knows that God exists. The God of the Bible is not that puny where he created everybody and then left them guessing whether he exists or not. Every human being on planet earth knows that God exists and knows that it's the God of the Bible. God made you. You're made in his image and likeness. You read the first pages of the Bible. Divine inspiration. God has given us his word. That's a lamp to our feet. A light to our path. So that we don't walk in ignorance. And live life with no hope. And don't walk in darkness. Believing the lies of false dead religion that can't save anybody. There's great hope today, Barrow. There's great hope for you today. If you're breathing, there's still hope for you, friends. You can come and know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Do you know what's real? Do you know what's true? We live in a society, don't we, these days that's lost its collective marbles, that's departed from reality, and believe in all kinds of insane ideologies, telling a little child that it can change its sex, 
telling men they can marry men and women they can marry women. We live in a nation that's lost its collective marbles, calling black white and white black, calling evil good and good evil. And we need to remember what God says. He says, woe to them who call evil good and good evil. You see, this nation's lost its integrity. This nation has lost the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Once over, this nation used to be a God-fearing nation, didn't it? And we were far safer back then. Look at us now, facing financial ruin, all kinds of social catastrophe looming, maybe the threat of a nuclear war. You see, when a nation forgets God, it never ends well. And it begins with us, friends. It begins with us. Each and every one of us needs to be right with God. Are you right with God? Are you prepared to meet God? You see, we're dying people. That's the reality of the world that we live in. We don't get to stay here forever. You and I are finite beings. We have an end. Bless you, Stephen. We're dying people. You and I, every heartbeat we take is a heartbeat less, moving closer and closer to our appointment with God. You and I have an appointment to keep, and we'll keep it perfectly. We'll stand before the God who gave us life, and the God who's going to take our life at his appointed time. Your day of death, just like mine, Christians die too, is appointed by God, fixed already, and nobody leaves this world any sooner or later than at appointed time. You see, friends, we don't live in a world that, that's governed by chance or luck. There's no such thing as an accident in creation. The God of the Bible didn't make it that way. The God of the Bible is all-powerful. He knows everything there is to know about everything. Why? Because he ordains everything that comes to pass. The God of the Bible is sovereign, you see. Totally, utterly sovereign over everything. <laughs> There's nothing happens by chance or accident. Your life has meaning and purpose because you're made in the very image and likeness of God. You're the pinnacle of God's creation, God's masterpiece. You and I, the human race, are God's masterpiece. But there's bad news. Bad news. In order for you to understand and appreciate good news, first you need to understand the bad news. The bad news is we are fallen creatures. You and I are, good, are not good people. You and I are fallen sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. You've heard of Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve, they were our first parents. God made a man from the soil of the ground, the dust of the earth, and then as a helpmate for her husband, God made a woman from man's rib. God created a woman as a helpmate for her husband. That's a woman's role in life, to be a helpmate for her husband. God created a woman from the rib cage of Adam. That's the account of creation when you read the Bible. Please read the Bible. Put down Candy Crush. Switch off Netflix at fortnight and read the Word of God. And you can come to a knowledge of the truth. Entrance of God's Word brings light, the Bible says. Understanding. You can have understanding of this wicked, depraved, uncertain world that we live in. One very astute preacher from ages past, he said, lock me away in a prison cell somewhere, in a dark dungeon, and leave me with my Bible, and I'll tell you everything that's happening in the world today. You see, there's nothing new under the sun. You see, all the wickedness that man gets up to, mankind, women do wicked things too. And there's nothing new, friends, nothing new under the sun. We're fallen creatures. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world that's doomed to destruction. This world is coming to an abrupt end, 
at God's appointed time, the God of the Bible. There isn't any other God other than the God of the Bible. If you're worshipping some other God other than the God of the Bible, that's a figment of your imagination and anybody else who joins you in that delusion. You got a question, my friend? I'm ex forces. I've been shot twice. Oh, I'm I'm sorry about that. I survived. There's a lot. Somebody must have been looking out for me. Whether it be a family member, a sister, or somebody else. But I now volunteer at St. Mark's. Okay. A volunteer vicar. Volunteer vicar? I'm not trained. Okay. So I'm I'm trained. But at my age, I'm 53 now. Okay. But I enjoy it. I, 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 I. God's displeasure. I agree with you. 
Yeah, because God is holy, you see, and he hates all sin, and he's going to judge all sin wherever he finds it. Well, I got this horrible, horrible, terrible, as we were talking about earlier, I got this terrible, terrible thing. We are heading down, down the path. This planet. Yeah, this, this planet is it's heading to destruction. Right. But it's not going to. Ex- it's not going to be destroyed by our carbon footprint. So recycling our rubbish and being an unhealthy vegan and driving an electric car isn't going to save the planet, is it? Please stop trying to save the planet. They might get rid of us, but at least the, the animals and the plants, hopefully they'll still be okay. Yeah, well... Because they don't deserve any punishment because they've done that wrong. It's right. We're, and, we're the idiots. Well, God has told us all we need to know in here. Do you have a Bible, Harry? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you can make yourself yeah, time. As well. Oh, what? Yeah, well, the, the Greek Cypriot. Oh, the Greek language as well, yeah. But I, I can't actually read it properly, so I take it to the church. Okay. And the lady, she, she's a, she's Greek. Yeah. She reads it to me. All right. It's kind of nice. Oh, okay. Well, read your Bible, because the Bible, it says, entrance of God's word brings light, understanding. You see? And what the Bible says, it tells us about how sinners can be reconciled to God. And it says this, I was going to read it, it says in Titus, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, uh, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. You see, if we hope to get to heaven, it, and which we all should, as human beings, we're dying people, we're going to die at our appointed time. The God of the Bible, the only God in existence, has ordained our day of death. When we die, we die at our appointment, appointed time that God has fixed already and nobody can change it. You can't add a single second to your life Neither can you take a second from it. And the, yes, but one, one second, because the only way that anybody goes to heaven after death is not by any works done in, of them in righteousness. So fasting and praying doesn't get, get anybody to heaven. Confessing your sins to a Roman Catholic priest and going to church, praying to Mary and praying the rosary doesn't get anybody to heaven. You can look after the vulnerable the sick that's, and the infirmed. That's been a nurse. I, 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 I yeah, swear. and that doesn't get you to heaven. Why? Because you've sinned against God. You're a guilty criminal who needs his sins forgiven. Well, here's the question I was going to ask you. Right. And you, you saw like, the bullet in the head, basically. So how the hell do you end up in hell? Well, if you want to go to hell, and most of you would until God gives you a, a healthy fear of him, then all you have to do is is not trust in what Jesus Christ has done. You see, it's by faith. Faith alone in what Jesus Christ has done on that cross when he bled in agony and died on that cross. The, yeah, the, etern- the eternal, sinless Son of God entered creation. If I could travel in time, I would. And I'd go back and I'd go... And I'd, lo- I'd love to hear his hand and say thank you. Well, That's what I would love to you can tell him that at the foot of your bed. You don't need to go back in time. Well, you read your Bible. The I'd Bible. Do, I'd, but I'd still like to meet him. Well, you will meet him. Jesus, yeah. That's good. You want to meet him because we're all destined to meet him. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ soon. Death is coming for every one of us, friends. We're not going to stay here forever. We're dying people. Every heartbeat we take is one less. Every lung full of air that we breathe is one less. And so it makes good sense, doesn't it? Good common sense to prepare to meet God, to prepare for our inevitable that after death we stand before God and it's judgment. The God of the Bible is not winking at anybody's sin, is he? The God of the Bible is holy, is purer of purer eyes than to behold evil. That's the point. Right, God is holy. Because he doesn't judge. He doesn't judge. But he is the judge, the Bible says. He's a just judge who will do what's right. A kind person. A, a, a kind. What? The only judge. 
Yeah, he's the only judge. Yeah, that's right. You, I mean, there's judges on, on in this world, but they're imperfect judges, aren't they? They you can bung them a few quid and get off with your crime, or if you. Well, well, the God. Well, people, we make judgments all the time, don't we? Yeah, really. I'm just saying they don't have any right to judge. Well. No, thank you, Harry. Yeah, God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Take you care. beat me. I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay to judge to make judgments. We see people doing horrendous things in the Middle East. You know, blowing people up and and, and shooting people and taking people hostage. That's evil, wicked, and it's okay to say that. It's okay to judge. Jesus is the ultimate judge of all mankind. He's going to judge all sin wherever he finds it. You know, he's going to leave no stone unturned. Do not pee on there. <laughs> Are you? It's okay. It happens. <laughs> Are you um, a Christian woman then? You, you, do you go to church? Oh, which one? Spring Mount. Spring Mount. Spring Mount. Oh, Spring Mount. Is it a good church? Yeah. Oh, good. They preach the gospel? Yeah. And uh, I'm getting baptized soon. Oh, good. When did you get saved? Years ago. Ages ago. Oh, ages ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Hi, man. Just wondering what you're using. Just a little ampli. I'm buying them off um, Amazon for about 30 quid. 30 quid Amazon? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, should do. Should do the, the good make. Very effective. What's it called? Yeah, should do. Should do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably Chinese. Yeah, yeah. What are you wanting it for? Are you going to preach yourself? Yeah, well, I might do. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, Christian man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can only take people as far as you've gone yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? <laughs> Workington. Workington. Uh, you got the, you got the church up there. Yeah. AOG or the other one? No, the a the AOG. They've lost their marbles. We we're Baptists. Baptists. Yeah, the AOG. They let women women in the pulpit. We don't yeah. let women in the oh, pulpit. No. All right. I don't mind a woman. Well, as you as should. As long as they're good. The Bible says no women preachers. Yeah. No women preaching men. Well. They can teach kids. Yeah. They do the Sunday school little ca- yeah, crash. Yeah, yeah. But I can't teach men. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Anyway, I can't stop. Well, can I give you a leaflet to read? Of course. You can. Take you yeah, in it. I'll give you uh, some details about us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leaflet and that. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I'll take a leaflet. So you're with the Baptists, eh? Baptists. Uh, oh, I'd like to see. That's, 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 a, that's, that's a wonderful uh, yeah, you like it. Brilliant. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Good. What are you going to sh- use it for? I should do. Preaching. Really? Well. You don't seem very serious. Give it a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, God bless. What's your name? Yes, yeah, Sue. Sue, nice to meet you, Sue. Yeah, you too. I'm Dale. Have a good day. Does this happen much here? Does people preach here much? No. No, no. it doesn't, doesn't seem to be much, much spiritual life down here. No, there isn't really. The churches um, are pretty bad, aren't they? Really. I mean, our church, Spring Mound, is, is full. It's like, full? Yeah, and there's a lot, there's a lot of young ones <coughs> there. Um, it's probably, I, in my opinion, it's the best church in Bangalore. Okay. Oh, you would know, wouldn't you? You, you live here. Somewhere a bit boring, like. Aye. Um, whereas, do you know Johnny? Um, Johnny Harrison. Oh, Johnny Harrison. He's the pastor there. I thought you were going to say Johnny Geos. Have you heard of him, Johnny Geos? Oh. I don't know. No, I don't know Johnny Harrison. I can look him up on on Google, though, can I? Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. He's a lovely guy. He did. Um, my son's funeral last oh. year. I lost my son last oh, year. Oh man, sorry about that. What? Do drugs or something, was he? No, he took his own life. Because of a girl. Oh. Broke his heart. <laughs> happens a lot, you know. I won't see you. Hi, Sue. Hi. Okay. Oh, it's okay. But oh, we've got good news. Good news today. The go- gospel. The gospel means good news. And good news only makes sense when you understand the bad news. The bad news is that we're fallen creatures. We're not good people. We're not good people by God's economy. You see, God is holy, perfectly righteous, perfectly pure. He doesn't make any mistakes, you see. Your life as... Yeah, 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 right. yeah you're going to take one of these? Yeah, I'll 
Have you got a Bible? Have you got a Bible? Which one? In Overson. Oh, Overson? Yeah. What, do you know what they call these? Yeah, it's Crossing the Street Church. Okay. Well, you know Scott Church, and there's a prayer group on the Thursday. Oh, okay. Are you going with him? Yeah, I'm going with him, yeah. Okay. Go, I mean, go to church with him. Are you going to church with him? No, no, I am. Huh? I am. I've got an addiction, you see. Well, you know, well, Jesus. He's Je overcome the addiction, and I can't get it. Well, Jesus can set the captives free. Yeah, he's trying, he's trying to get me off that shit. Yeah, you need to be, you need to be in your right mind. You need to put down, put down the alcohol and pick up your Bible. That's what Jesus would tell you, man. Okay. Well, I'm trying to do the well and stuff, but the well and baller. Oh yeah. I think it's too much intense. Okay. You too, my dear. Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. He. Whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. There's good news today, friends. We can be right with God, even though we've sinned horribly against Him and done heinous things in His sight. You see, all sin, every lie, every wicked, unkind word, every hateful, unforgiving word towards other human beings, every wicked thought, every filthy thought that we've ever had, it can all be forgiven. It can all be forgiven. Jesus Christ, he came into this world to save sinners. Sinners like you and me. You see, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm not here like some Pope-like figure, pretending to be a holy individual far above anybody else. I'm a sinner too. I'm a saved sinner. And you can be a saved sinner. You can be redeemed, reconciled to God, even though you've committed great crimes against him. All sin is against God, you see. God is holy, pure. And what is a holy, pure God going to do with impure, unholy people like us? What should a holy, pure God do with unholy, impure people like us, friends? You know the answer to that. There's a day of reckoning coming. Thankfully, thankfully, there's a day of judgment coming. People might get off with their crimes in this lifetime and do unspeakable evil things in secret. They might temporarily get away with their crimes if they don't get caught by some and judged by some earthly judge. There's a day of ultimate judgment coming where everybody will stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is humanity's judge. He's the creator of everybody. He's not just a prophet. He created all prophets that Jesus Christ, he created you. And he created you for him. You're his property, you see. You and I aren't autonomous human beings. We aren't, we don't govern ourselves. We're not, we didn't create ourselves, did we? We didn't give ourselves life. The God of the Bible, Jesus Christ did. He made you and he made you for him. That's the meaning of life. That we live not for ourselves, not for our pleasure and fun and all the stuff in life. We live for him. To live is Christ, the Bible says. To live is Christ and to die is gain. You see, if you become a Christian today, and I hope you do, we've prayed for you that you would. If you become a Christian today, you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart. God is love. The God of the Bible, thankfully, is love, but he's also just. And he's a just judge who will do what's right on the day of judgment. He's not winking at your sin. He's not up in heaven waving a rainbow flag celebrating diversity and inclusivism. The God of the Bible isn't winking at humanity's sin. And he demonstrated his love toward us, the God of the Bible, that while we are sinners and enemies of his, Christ died for us. God, the God of the Bible, he killed his own son on that cross. The eternal, sinless son of God came to this dark world full of sin. He was born of a virgin, a miracle birth. Why are you shaking your head, my friend? Don't you believe it? Yeah, well, Jesus can make you believe, my friend. Jesus Christ is your God, your judge, 
and he's going to take your life when his free will determines, and he's already determined, he's already fixed your appointment, your day of death, and after death comes judgment, Barrow. And this life will throw all kinds of things at us to keep us distracted from that main thing. Our eternity. You and I are eternal beings. We are going to live forever somewhere. And what will you give in exchange for your soul? What are you living for, Barrow? Are you living for pleasure and fun? What sin are you refusing to let go that will take you to a devil's hell? You see, there is a, there is a heaven to be won. An eternal world of joy and peace forevermore where there's no more tears... No more mental issues. No more lying, deceitful politicians. A perfect world where there's no more sin. You can go to heaven. 